This week we're going to talk about our old friend GRIB and how we can read GRIB files with X-Array and maybe fix some of the problems that you might encounter. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I wanted to talk about GRIB, which we've done a little bit in the past, but I wanted to give a little more of the background on GRIB and then look at reading GRIB with X-Array, which has had some issues in the past uh, with the National Weather Service encoded files, and show you how we can read those, how we can make a basic plot, and how we can fix some of the issues that you might find in those files. So to start off with, a little bit about GRIB in the past. GRIB, as we've mentioned, was designed as a transmission format. It was not really intended to store data originally. And reading it can be tricky because of that. It's not really uh, an indexable, accessible format. It's more like a streaming format. So each record is independent and you have to scroll through to find the record that you want. So that can be a slow process. Now there's some tools like PyGRIB or the National Weather Service DGRIB tool, and we have videos on those. But fundamentally, what is a GRIB file? Well, GRIB stands for, depending on who you ask, either gridded binary or general regularly distributed information in binary form. And over the years, there have actually been three editions of GRIB. So GRIB0 is obsolete. We don't use it anymore. GRIB1 is not the most current edition of GRIB endorsed by the WMO now, but it's still pretty widely used, though many organizations are slowly changing over to GRIB2, which is the newest format. It's a update and a modernization of the GRIB standard, and it's coming in to play more and more places. One of the things that it does allow is compression, which is pretty neat, but it is not backwards compatible with GRIB1. If you were to look inside a GRIB file, you'll see that it contains some records, could be one, could be many, say a time series of records, but they're just back to back as this big bit stream. At the very top of the file, there's a header, and that header contains some information on the data, some information on the header itself, like how long it is, uh, what method we should be used to decode this packed data, what parameters there are, and the geographical coordinates that the data are plotted on. But as I mentioned earlier, this can be very slow to scroll through. Uh, the records being totally independent is not necessarily the best thing. It's not indexable like a NetCDF file. Combining multiple records or multiple GRIB files for a highly dimensional data set, something that's got many times and many levels, can be kind of tricky. But the most frustrating thing is that it depends on an external table to decode what is GRIB parameter 27. And those GRIB tables are not published anywhere standardized. So they're published by different methods in different locations. And until you get to GRIB 2, there's not a machine readable version of the GRIB table. So that can cause some issues as we'll see here in just a little bit. But enough talking about GRIB, let's actually look at some data. So the link to the National Weather Service current GRIB file archive is going to be down in the description of the video, but that'll get you here. And we're going to go ahead and download the apparent temperature, APT, and the temperature, the TEMP files. These are dataset.variable.bin format. And these are not terribly small files. You can see they're 40, 50 megs each. Once we get those, we're gonna go over into our notebook. And like every Python project, we start with our imports. Import X-Ray is XR. Import matplotlib.pyplot is PLT. And from metpy.units, we're going to import the units registry. So there's lots of ways to deal with GRIB, as I said. We've talked about PyGRIB some, and I use PyGRIB routinely. But with X-Array and the CF-GRIB engine, now we can load that into an X-Array 
data array. There have been some funny things happen in the past because of the way the encoding from the weather service works, and those have largely been addressed, but not totally as we'll see. So I'm gonna load a data set. We're gonna pull in our temperature file, and we need to specify that the engine to use is CF Grib. Now, this will take just a second to read through that grib file. Remember, we're scrolling, 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 and loading. Now it's done. If you see something that says something like unrecognized engine CF grib, then you need to install CF grib. You could do a condo or pip install CF grib. Okay, if we look at our data set, we can see our dimensions. There are 42 steps in time. 1,377 Y points, 2,145 X points. And we look at our coordinates, we've got time, step, so that's step past the time, height above ground, lat, lawn, valid time. And then we go to our data variables, which is what we're most interested in generally, and that is T2M, temperature two meter. Let's take a look at the T2M variable. Remember, it's got multiple steps. I'm just going to plot the index zero time step and call plot. And notice it's pretty smart. So it's able to do X and Y. It labels it as two meter temperature in Kelvin. The title is the time and the steps or coordinates. So really for one line, this has done some pretty intelligent work for us already. So that's pretty nice, but this isn't a plotting tutorial necessarily. It's more about uh, how to use X-Array that we will make a little bit nicer plot. Now you know that MetPy has an accessor. So we can call ds.metpy.parseCF. This should parse anything that conforms to the CF conventions. And well, we don't quite get exactly what we think we're gonna get. Um, we get a warning that there's more than one time coordinate present, but let's see how we did. Okay, so we've got data arrays. Okay, so there's our time coordinate in the step. That's what's getting confusing. So this does work. We can use that accessor. And we get a lot of our variables are our attributes on our variable correct here so it does work there might be some errors or warnings depending on exactly what's going on with the grib file that you get the weather service grib files can sometimes have some interesting issues with them and what's one of those interesting issues well let's try to make a figure and i'm going to say the fig size is going to be 14 by 14 we're going to add an axis. One row, one column, first plot. And the projection, we should be able to, on the data variable that we've parsed with metpy parse cf, dot metpy dot cartopy crs. That should give us the coordinate reference system. And we get an attribute error. And this is because well, we weren't able to parse the coordinate reference system correctly. And it gives you some hints uh, that we can assign a CRS manually if we want. So again, it works mostly, but sometimes with these weather service files, you encounter some interesting things. Let's go ahead and try to make a plot. Do that, we're gonna have to do a few more imports here. Cartify.crs, sccrs, cartopy.feature as C feature, import numpy as MP. So now I'm going to go ahead and create my figure, add my axes with add subplot, using my manually specified CRS. I'm gonna set an extent that's good for conus. And don't forget, we need to specify that those are in latitude and longitudes or plat Curie. Let's 
I'm gonna go ahead and add some features so we know where we are on the map. I know that we've plotted correctly. Add the coastline. And we'll give that a line width of three quarters. Add our state outlines. And we'll make those a line width of a half. And let's go ahead and try to contour our temperature. I'm gonna do a filled contour of our data variable dot X. And this is one of the cool things with X-Array, remember, is that we have these coordinates attached. Data variable dot Y. Data variable, and I'm gonna do an index select of step zero. I want to take the zero with index of the step coordinate. Our transform is our CRS. And for levels, let's plot 260 to 310 in five degree increments. Remember we're in Kelvin here. Oh, I missed an underscore in my width scale. And this is a pretty hefty data set here. But we notice, well, it, it came back pretty quick and there's nothing on the map other than our outlines of states. So what happened to my contours? Why didn't my contours show up? Well, we're using X and Y. Let's take a look at our data variable dot X. Well, this isn't very helpful, right? This is an index going from zero to two, one, four, four. So that's why it's not plotting. It doesn't make sense in the Lambert Conic conformal coordinate system. So I'm gonna plot data variable dot longitude, data variable dot latitude. And then we need to change our transform from the CRS to plat -Curie. Now we're having to do a reprojection to put on a, a plat curie data set on a map that is not plat curie So that's gonna take just a little bit and we've talked about some ways to deal with that before. But once we contour this relatively large data set, we're going to have a map that looks something like what we want. So the point of this is just to show you that when you're dealing with GRIB that gets read into X-Ray, it may seem very easy to deal with, and it is once you know a few tricks, but if you're just trying to plot X and Y and wondering why it's not working, it's a pretty common pitfall that we see with people doing GRIB. All right, and so after a minute, we get our contour map, and it looks like we've done a pretty good job. We're getting things that line up with the country border and just off the coast where we know that the forecast is created. So it looks like we've done our projection math correctly. Now let's take a look at a different GRIB file so you can see what I mean by not all GRIB files are created equally. We're gonna load a data set of apparent temperature. Exact same as we did before. And when we look at this data set, the data variable is called unknown. Well, what happens if we try to parse that with the MetPy parser? Does that help us any? So our data variable is going to be ds.metpy.parsecf unknown. We get our message about more than one time coordinate, that's fine. And let's see, well, we're still unknown. We didn't gain any information on that. So what's going on here? Why is apparent temperatures showing up as unknown? Well, this happens to be one of those grid variables that we don't have all the information for. And so we don't know what to do with it, what it's called. So we default to the name of unknown. That's not very helpful. So let's rename that. We can call ds.rename and give it a dictionary. 
We can say we want to take unknown as the key, and the value is going to be apparent temperature. And you could also do this just for something like T2M as temperature 2 meter. Well, we have the level information of 2 meters. We really just need to call it temperature or air temperature. You could do that as well. Now, if we look at our data set, data variables are called apparent temperature. So that's pretty handy. We still don't have units associated with it. We could go ahead and assign units if we wanted. So ds.apparent temperature equals our dot data. I want to access just that numpy array. ds.apparent temperature dot data times units Kelvin. And now we have a quantity array here. So we've successfully renamed the variable and assigned a temperature unit to that. Uh, we could also modify the attribute. Apparent temperature dot adders. And we know that it was the grib units attribute from looking at our temperature data set before and it was set to capital K. And that's adders. And we've got our units of Kelvin. We can load in the attributes. And our grib units are set to Kelvin. So it shows you that you can use X-Ray, even with these poorly behaved grib files, to modify the attributes, get them set up again for success, like the more well-formed files, and still use it to make your life easier. I hope that you found this useful because we all know that dealing with grib files can sometimes drive you crazy. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.